Hello and welcome. My name is Pat Peterson. I'm an Applications Instructor at New Horizons Twin Cities. Uh, today what we're going to look at is just one of the many tips that we'll continue to go through um, while we do these little segments. The first one that we're going to look at today is Sparklines. Sparklines are a built-in um, new feature of Office 2010, specifically with the Excel program. Everyone that I've showed them to has loved them. Um, a lot of people just didn't know it was available to them. But we're going to just quick look at what sparklines are. Um, what I have open here is I have an Excel workbook open. That Excel workbook just has a series of information across the top row, just months, January to December. Then you notice that there is a data set there from row 12, or row 2 rather, to row 13. What we can see there uh, then is that I just want to create short little graphs so I can analyze the data without having to look at each of the numbers because it can get kind of confusing. By looking at this here, um, to create a sparkline itself, all I'm going to do is highlight the series of information I want to create a little um, data set for. Um, once it's selected, then I can come up to the Insert tab. When I have the Insert tab, you notice that there's charts there. That's not what we're going to focus in on. We're going to focus in on sparkline. So it's not actually a chart. Um, it's integrated in the actual workbook rather than an actual object of a chart. I click on Line Sparkline, and you can notice right now it's got my data range from A2 to L2, which is correct because that's what's highlighted. Next thing that you can notice then is if I click on the location range, it's going to put the dollar signs in there for absolute referencing to keep that um, locked into M2. That means if it's dragged, it's going to stick there. Next thing we notice then is that, our, um, that my spark line shows there. We can see that it starts at 55, which is roughly in the middle there. It goes to 52, so down slightly. Dips on the 21, back up to 89, and we can see that that trend is followed there. The nice thing about that is it just allows you to analyze the trend of the data that's either to the left of it or above it. Um, and uh, allows you to see what that data set is. Next thing I'm going to do then is then I'm just going to fill this down by using that little fill handle in the lower right hand corner. Um, when I drag that down then you notice that it's going to fill all of my uh, series of information there and I get a sparkline for each individual data set. Uh, nice thing about this then is once I have the sparkline created you see that there's a contextual tab that's created. Um, that contextual tab is just the design portion. It allows you to edit your data set if you choose to. Also do columns, win loss, and then you also have some other items there for your high points and low points. The different types that are available is the column and the win loss in addition to the line. By just clicking on column, it's going to update the column chart. Depending on what kind of data set you're looking at, that may be appropriate. In this situation, the line chart would be more than appropriate. Um, we have the high points, the low points, negative points, first point, last point, and then markers. These are just different markers that's going to be on there. If I choose high point then, you're going to see that it puts a little bitty dot um, on the highest portion there. Right now it looks like it's right around this August 100 for this one. Um, and you can come back here and probably the 89, oh, sorry, the November is the 100 on that one. Um, so the high points there. Low point's going to do the same thing. And you can see that you have your little preview style up there as well. First point and last point, and then markers. What markers is going to do is put a dot on each data point. That way you could count over if you wanted to see what number it was. The next thing to notice is in the middle here, you have your different styles that are available to you that are based upon the Microsoft Office colors. And then you can choose whichever color that, that would fit you better, um, noticing that now you can see the points stand out a little more that way. Um, the last thing to keep in mind then is that you have some other grouping options there. These are all grouped together. Notice when I just clicked on one of them, it selected the entire group. If you wanted to ungroup them so they behave differently, then you'd have to ungroup them. But right now they behave together because um, it sees it that way. So um, that's Sparklines. That's your quick tip for this week. Um, we will be having more of these. Um, so hopefully check us back soon and uh, have a good day.